My name is Dr. Jeffrey Stainer, and I'll present to you today on FastBlade, the world's first regenerative fatigue test facility for tidal blades. So there are test facilities for tidal blades, but this one particularly uses regenerative fatigue, as in we recover energy during the process to make it less expensive as it's more efficient. So the PI for the project is our head of school and chair of materials engineering, Dr. Professor Kahuro Brody, and he supported me in this role as project manager. And I'd like to thank our project partners, mainly Babcock, who provided the site and engineering support around the reaction frame. But as you can see, this is a, a group of people coming together, a group of companies to deliver what the tidal sector needs to test its blades. So we need testing on blades as the design requires development still. There's quite a lot of complex loads acting on blades due to turbulence, wave orbitals, and shear profiles. You want to optimize your hydrodynamic performance and balance that with structural. And the objective for developers will be for blades to last as long as possible and balance cost. And we have seen blade failures. So imagine you could test a blade before you put it in the ocean. They do this already for wind, but we have a slight problem that tidal blades are a lot shorter and have to fight four times the load felt by wind turbines for a, for a given turbine, say, of one megawatt. And that's due to the fact that density in the water is 800 times greater than air. So if you had a, a one megawatt tidal blade, or tidal turbine, the blade would be nine meters in length. But for a wind blade, that would be 32.6 meters in length. This means that tidal blades are effectively shorter, stiffer, and resonate at a much higher frequency than wind blades. So fast blade has been developed to use hydraulics that allow us to test these short, stiff blades. It's part of a UK engineering and physical science research council project, where they've enabled us with a, a grant to develop this to be ready in 2021, where we'll be able to apply these larger loads, three meganewtons in static and one meganewton fatigue. And as you can see here, they will flex the blade back and forth. To give you an example, this is what fast blade will look like when finished. Here we have four hydraulic rams loading a blade at around one hertz. And what we can do with this is take 20 years of that complex ocean loading and apply it to a tidal blade within three months in the dry, in the wet, sorry, in the dry, in the lab, where we can learn will that blade last in those ocean conditions prior to deployment and de-risking the technology. So what you see is a blade length, we can go up to 13 meters. To be honest, we could go a little bit further, but we would not be able to load at the tip. We have hydraulic cylinders capable of uh, lubricating rod and cylinder end, providing the force from the ocean at discrete points along it. We can place those hydraulic rams anywhere along this 12 by two meter bed which is supported by this large box beam reaction frame developed by Babcock. We have a control room for teaching space and clients so they can relax and enjoy and watch the tests, hoping that nothing exciting happens. Basically the blades last for the three months and they're good to go in the water. And this strong wall is part of a very complex design that connects to the reaction frame, which allows us to hold this universal adaptive plate from which will support the tidal blade. And all of this is run by the thousand liter per minute regenerative pumping system that is stored underneath in the grating. This is developed by Artemis Intelligent Power, now a company of Danfoss, and they are capable of pushing and pulling, or shall I say pumping and motoring hydraulic systems, which is their, their USP. The facility is located in Babcock, which is in Fife in the UK, just over the bridge from Edinburgh, at the back of this um, dockyard site in what we call the Building 29, the Dutch Barn. You can see on the bottom left here, 
a video that shows us uh, taking the roof off the building to show what's inside, where we've installed two 10 ton cranes. We've dug out this big pit and that's where the reaction frame will be installed ready for mid 2021. This is a short video to show you the progress to date. You have in the beginning, the building as it, stand, as it was, and uh, we've dug the massive pit, laid in the concrete um, trenches, poured the floor, and the walls are currently going up as we speak. This was taken yesterday. And that's what we see the facility will look like in the future. So I've talked about the resonant of uh, wind blades and tidal blades and there, the tidal blades are too stiff. On the top left, you can see wind turbine testing where they're resonating under their own mass at a frequency which is acceptable for the composite material. It does not get too hot. But however, with tidal blades, they're so short, the frequency would be such that the composite would get hot. So we're not able to use regenerative testing, which is why Fastblade has been developed with these regenerative hydraulics. What the gener regenerative hydraulics do is they store energy in the pumps as kinetic energy spinning that's transferred through a hydraulic network into the blade through the hydraulic cylinders. And the blade will store that as potential energy as it deflects like a big spring. Then the blades are allowed to push the oil back through the hydraulic lines where the hydraulic pumps will then speed up storing the energy again as kinetic energy. And we can do this system with 75% efficiency from loading to unloading. Now, this is um, excellent because over three years of testing a million cycles, we will be able to save not only energy, but also cost for our clients. The other um, barrier, if you like, was having certification routes for tidal blades. There are DNV standards, the ST0164 and the IEC 62600-3 has recently been um, let out as its first draft for testing. And we've developed that with help from students. Peter Nelson did an MEng project in Edinburgh, which helped support me to help write that standard for the, for the blade testing in the back end of the annex. So, it's really important that we use these standards to recreate the ocean loads. And that's where you can see matching the shear force along the dimensionless length of the tidal blade. Here you can see how that's done with the hydraulics from Fox VPS, where we're able to recreate not only spatially the loads acting on the blade, but also in time with the turbulence waves and shear force by using our own in-house unique control with national instruments. It's important that we also load the blades safely and that we don't cause any premature failure. So the work of Miguel has assisted us with the design of saddles and everyone who would come with the blade, there would be a bespoke design set up in order to make sure that the loads entering the blade are are not causing damage. If you can imagine a tidal blade is loaded by water pressure acting over the top and bottom surfaces. When we test it in the lab, we're pushing at a point. So the pressures are much higher. The instrumentation suite that would go with a system like this is, is monumental really. Um, and you see this in wind testing labs, cables everywhere, hundreds of channels. It's extremely important that over three months that that is synchronized, time stamped, and well managed. So we will be operating a national instrument system, which you can see here deployed for a project it was called Powder Blade. This is where we loaded a small wind turbine six meters in length and used DIC from Match ID, where we were able to create a 3D representation of the blade all the way around that whole transition zone you can see in the middle. And finally, other equipment can be tested on Fastblade. This does not have to be a tidal only test rig. Here you have a mast raising equipment from the top of a submarine where we have 
rejig the system in order to recreate that of the submarine and will apply loads to the mast to recreate the motions of a, a submarine through the water, wave action, uh, whatever it may feel. So I urge you to look at this test rig here and think, how could we use regenerative pumping up to three mega newtons in load, a 12 by two meter test bed and a universal adapter plate to take any composite or metallic material and put it through the paces of operational life within the lab in order to de-risk technology going forward. You might want to investigate new materials, new structures, new jointing methods, and we have the full equipment suite to back that up. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take some or give any more information, you can contact me here. Thank you very much.